Yo guys, Blue's not here and welcome back to another video. Today I am back with another Cali Classical preview between the San Jose Earthquakes versus the Los Angeles Galaxy, but in all honesty, I don't even know why I'm even wasting my time doing this preview video. I mean, there is just no wonder why when you look at this week Heineken Rivalry Week and if you look at all the MLS rivalry, the Cali Classical is probably the most irrelevant one out of all of them. Why? It's because coming into this game, both of these teams are pretty much not going to be making the playoffs. Both of these teams have their playoff hole pretty much ended a while ago. Well, for the Quakes, it actually ended on Wednesday. But, you know, yeah, I mean, this is probably one of those games that the only thing that is left to fight for is just pride and the fact that uh, at least... We have 24 hours where the fan base can say that, you know, we of course beat you and we of course won the series against you. But then the other fan base is going to trash talk back and say, well, at least you're not going to be making the playoffs either. So, yeah, that is why I just think that I don't even know why in the world I'm, am I even doing this preview in the first place. But because of the fact that I haven't seen anybody else done this preview and because I did say in my Periscope stream uh, last Wednesday that I was going to do a Cali Classical preview, I have to stick to my promise and make this preview. So, yeah, let's obviously look at this game. I mean, obviously, as I said before, you know, it's such an irrelevant game because there's no playoff indication that will be in this game. Usually around this kind of game, and since this is like the last Cali Classico that usually happened in August, this is a game where there's going to be a lot of playoff implication, or there's going to be a, a game where if you of course win this game, it will give you a huge confidence in the playoffs, but instead that is not going to happen because right now the Galaxy are in 10th place. We are in 7th place right now. The Galaxy, they haven't won a game almost 2 months now. I mean, they have have gone 10 game without a win and they also have lost 9 out of 10. Meanwhile the Quakes, they also haven't won a game on the road since probably back in May when we beat FC Dallas. And the Galaxy hasn't won a game at home since I don't even know when. I mean honestly the Galaxy are like the only team in the league that treat their home like an away game pretty much. But you know obviously this game is just a game where we're gonna see who can actually break their their long and losing streak and it's pretty much a game that you know something's got to give with the fact that who exactly can finally end their misery streak that they have this season or maybe this is gonna be a nil nil draw I mean if this game actually end in a draw then yeah nobody want want to see that it's just gonna continue to add increasingly frustration to both fan base after what has happened uh, this season now Obviously for the Quakes, you know, the way that I think we need to um, break down LA and get a win is that we got to go at them in the beginning, okay? Look, LA, their defense and midfield is not very good. I mean, I think the attack is the only thing we're going to have to worry because they have both Dos Santos' brother now. And they always tend to score a goal against us. Now, last time they didn't when they were on the feel um, because they weren't even there, okay? Back in July, Giovanni Dos Santos wasn't even playing in that game. So, yeah, that's why we, of course, got that victory and... It wasn't even a, a very big kind of victory. I mean, we got incredibly lucky in that last Cali Clasco in the MLS by scoring in just a late, late equalizer. A very classic Cali Clasco thing to do. But having said that, this time we can't do that, okay? We got to go and get ourselves in the front foot. And I think doing this road game from what I have seen the Quakes, right? We need to put some more pressure than what we did. We can't just allow us to just sit back and just kind of like, like, just hopefully we can hit them on the counter attack. We have to go full throttle. We got to pretend that this is a home game. I mean, the, I think in many ways, right, from what I have seen in these last couple of games, we tend to, you know, think about attacking early on, but then all of a sudden we just kind of like sit back. Hopefully we can like catch team on the counter attack. But the thing is, just because we sit back doesn't mean that we are very good at that either. I mean, if you look at how we've been doing on the row in terms of our defense, I don't even need to say anymore. You can just look at the game against RSL. You can look at the game against the Dynamos. You can look at the game against the New York Red Bulls. You can look at the game against the Sounders, and you probably know how bad the defense was. It is just... Yeah, words cannot describe how bad our defense is right now. But hopefully in this game, our defense get tightened up a little bit. 
and hopefully we can finally score some goals. I mean, I think we have only scored like two goals in the last couple of games on the road and we have conceded like 20. I mean, we have conceded so many goals on the road that it is just absolutely unacceptable. And speaking of unacceptable, it is absolutely unacceptable to lose against the Galaxy. I mean, a team that hasn't won in 10 games and the last win they had in all competition was against a second division team. I mean, there is just absolutely no excuse the fact that we're going to drop points and give LA their second win at home and their first win in almost like 70 days. If that happens, then you are expecting an even angrier rant that I made back when I made that match review uh, when the Quakes take on RSL. But, it, of course, now we're going to get into the starting 11. And, by the way, this starting 11 that I am picking is not necessarily the starting 11 that Chris Leach is going to use because we know what he's going to probably use he's gonna use the 352 again which I've been saying it so many times in my review and my preview that we just don't have the personality to do it and as much as I really want to criticize and pretty much just roast Chris Leach now on the spot I might get my chances if we do not do well against the galaxy or lose them in my review video but for now I'm actually gonna just do my starting 11 in go I'm actually gonna say Bingham will coming back because Tarbell you know he's one of the many players in that game that had an absolute shocking kind of game and I think it's safe to say that we don't really have a reliable goalkeeper anymore and that is something that I haven't addressed a lot lately but I feel like it has to address some point in the offseason so for now I'm just gonna put Bingham back in it's not not like anything is gonna change with that but you know Bingham is gonna be back in goal in terms of the two center back partnership um, I don't know if Youngworth is back or not if he's not back then it's probably gonna be Bernardes and Alashe I mean as much as I really do not want to put Bernardes in there, you know, we just don't have any good defender right now. Like, every single defender we had right now is utterly shit on the road. So, it's almost like you just have to pick your poison of who is the worst player to put on your defense. And, unfortunately, I'm going to have to put Bernardes and Alashe, despite the fact of what I said in the last preview, where I just absolutely ripped to shit with what Bernardes has done in that game against RSL. Now, in terms, of course, the the right back, I am actually going to... I'm going to be making a big bit of a surprise and put Cordell Cato back in. Yes, I know. It's been a long time since Cato has back in. I don't know. He's probably one of the three players besides uh, Sarkodi and Dalkin that any Quakes fans would not want to see them near the starting 11. But the fact is, we just don't have any more fullbacks, right? Um, obviously, I know in the left back, it's going to be Lima. But in the right back, somebody's going to have to play that position. And I don't think Ofoder can actually play in that right back position. I don't think he's a natural fullback. So because of that, we're going to have to put Cato in there as much as I really don't want to do it. We just don't have anybody else available in that, that right back and in that full back position besides Lima, who I already put him in, in the left back position. Now, in terms, of course, the free midfielder on the left, it's going to be Hika. I have no idea why is he still... Is he not starting the game? I mean, I know Hika hasn't looked as well as he has in the beginning of the season. But surely, why in the world are we still sitting him on the bench of a player that, you know, he has got some attacking ability. And he has that kind of attacking threat that will scare a couple of MLS defenders. So why are we letting him sit on the bench and bring him on later when he probably isn't as effective as he is because I feel like Hika coming off the bench is just clearly not as effective as Hika starting in the starting 11 so that is why he's going to be on the left and then of course in the middle I am going to say it's going to be Tommy Thompson because Godoy is suspended for this game um not that I really want him to be in the starting 11 anymore I mean I've been keep saying it ever since Honorable Godoy um coming back from the Go Cup he's going to be having a lot of confident level getting dropped because you know he knocked Panama out with the the lone own goal that he scored against Costa Rica and that is just an absolute confident killer and it looks like it has ha it is now pretty much put on full display and I'm just really hope that you know I don't really want Godoy to be on the bench and just I don't want to say that he needs to be bench for his poor performance but I'm hoping that something's he needs to find something to reignite that confidence level because right now it's pretty clear to see that 
the reason why he's playing so bad right now is because of that own goal that he scored in the Gold Cup. It has really killed his confidence level. And hopefully in this game that he's suspended and he's not going to be playing this game, he hopefully he can regroup himself and maybe I'll, I'll select him again in the next game. Game. But of course for now, I'm gonna put Thompson there as the holding midfield or the attacking mid um, And then of course on the right um, I really don't know who exactly I want to put on the right either because Serin and Salinas in these last couple of games has not looked good at all So it's almost like another situation like the right back position where we have to pick our poison like I have to pick my poison of who exactly am I gonna start in the right mid and because Seren didn't play in that game against RSL, or actually no, I'm sorry, Seren did play in that game uh, against RSL, so yeah, I don't know, like honestly, I think either way, it's not a very good option, but I still need to put somebody in there, um, and I'm gonna just put Seren in there as the right mid, and then up front, I am actually gonna put Wondolowski and Akko and also Husin up front, I mean, please, just do not put Ameriqua in the starting 11 anymore. This is not 2016. This is not back when uh, we had um, in the managerial helm where we put the 4-4-2 and we always put one note and Ameriqua partnership in, in regularly. This is not vintage 2016. This is not, we're still not living in the Dom era. I thought we were moving on from the Dom era. And the fact that in the last game when I saw Chris Leach put Wando and Ameriqua as the, the number nine partnership, all I can think of is that Please, are you serious? Are we going back to the old Dominic Kinnear kind of uh, tactics where he decided to put Ameriqua and Wando as the partnership, even though the, their, those number, their number nine partnership was just so, so bad last year? And mainly it's because Ameriqua hasn't really looked at that good at all. I mean, besides, I think the only good moment I can think of Ameriqua um, as a... Quake's uh, player doing his time here is that he of course scored that chip goal against the Timbers and that's the only good moment that I can think of other than that he has been just utterly shit and he's clearly not a number nine for us and I think he probably is going to be sold in the winter transfer window or get traded or something like that but yeah obviously I want uh, Vako Kusin and Vondo in that number nine row and that of course is going to be the starting 11 that I want to see not necessarily the one that Chris Leach is going to do I'm pretty sure that about 90% that Chris Leach will not start the formation that I use mainly because it's not a 3-5-2 and that is the tactics that he tends to use even though it's been clear that it is not working and he's just not listening to the fans and stuff like that but Anyway, let's move on in terms, of course, the prediction of this game. Like I said, there is absolutely no excuse to either draw in this game or actually lose this game. Because, you know, LA, as I said many times, they haven't won a game in almost two months. They haven't won a game at home in almost four or five months. You know, there is just, it is just going to be, it's going to be just an absolute catastrophic. And the fans will just go on absolute rage mode if we drew or lose lose to LA in this game and yeah because of that I am gonna say that we are going to win this and I'm gonna say it's not gonna be pretty but I'm gonna say we're gonna win it by a final score of one nothing and yeah that of course is my prediction of this game and I hope you of course enjoyed this prediction video even though it's pretty much one of the most irrelevant and the one that I really didn't want to do in the first place but I, I just want to do it because no one else on YouTube actually done an actual Cali Clasco for for this Sunday but yeah I hope of course you guys enjoy this video if you do make sure you guys leave a like click the subscribe button make sure you leave a comment what do you think the starting 11 and the prediction of this game is going to be and yeah I hope you guys enjoyed it and I just have a big feeling that on Sunday when I am gonna do a match review that this is gonna be an all-out rant it will be one of the most angriest rant that I will ever make because I have a big feeling that the Quakes are not going to pick up three points against uh, LA on the road. But I'm just praying that we can get three points in this. And hopefully I can be a little bit happier in this in the match review. And yeah, I of course will see you guys then. Uh, I will do the match review right after the game has finished. And I will of course see you guys next time.